Hello everybody, my name's Tank Runner, coming to you live from the trunk of my car, because despite the fact that I've been living in my new apartment for almost three weeks now, I've yet to set up my sound booth and have been living almost exclusively off of Little Caesars pizzas. If I die, go ahead and tell my family I thought it was worth it, and welcome to another episode of Drawing Roulettes and World Building. Today, we're going to continue working on our project to create a new Pokemon region. Last episode, we worked on our second gym leader and the Pokemon they have on their team, Arctaro, the struggler Pokemon, who evolves into Blizzurk, and Tasma, the Tasmanian Tiger Pokemon who evolves into Magneon. In this video, I'll be covering the second wild area in our region and the new Pokemon you can find there. But I want to kick us off with a few updates and some world building. So if you're not interested in that and you just want to skip to the part where you get to see all the adorable monsters, here's a time code for that. Sorry I've been gone for so long, guys. If you watch my Smogus video or you've been following my community post, which I highly recommend you do, that's where all the cool kids are, you already know that I had to take a tiny break because I was in the middle of moving to the other side of my state. It was all pretty hectic. There was like a week there where I didn't have any internet, so there was a lot of sitting alone with my thoughts, going on walks, feeling the sun on my skin. It was terrifying. But now everything's back to normal. I don't have to interact with real humans. My butt constantly feels like it's just gonna fall off when I walk. And my knees make this sound. So everything's great. Let's draw some Pokemon. Today's location is the area just outside of the town that holds our second gym. We had to talk about it very briefly during our last video, but now's the time to jump into it. The environment is sort of a mix of the river and valley levels from the original Pokemon Snap, if I'm allowed to date myself here. Big lush fields that lead down into a small canyon with a river that runs through it, all surrounded by a small collection of mountains that keep this place well shaded and cool. It'll also give us access to some of the Pokemon that we may have encountered so far. Piper, Pinley, Varlata, and the first evolved form we found in the wild, Shrillark. Here's the full list of all the Pokemon you can catch in the area, from most common to rare, with open slots for the new Pokemon designs I'm about to show off. Let's get started. So I've gotten a lot of feedback since starting this series, but one of the biggest suggestions I've gotten has to be that my emu Pokemon have something to do with the emu war, which I can only really describe to you guys as the events of a Looney Tunes episode somehow taking place in real life, where a bunch of birds fought and killed everyone in the Australian military. Do not fact check me on this, take my word for it, it's way better this way. I decided because it was the first thing that came to my mind, and apparently everyone else's, that meant I should think a little bit harder on this concept. I ended up leaning a bit more in the direction of making our own version of Magikarp for this region. Not a regional variant, but a Pokemon that starts stupid and worthless, but with enough time and care can turn into a cool and powerful option. Babu, the emu Pokemon. Babu is generally a happy creature, living a peaceful existence of consistently walking into stationary objects. Despite regularly bumping into things it doesn't see, it is still extremely skittish. If Babu notices a trainer or even other Pokemon it isn't used to seeing in its environment, its first thought is always to run away as fast as it can. If you wish to catch one of these Pokemon, you'll need to be silent and quick on your feet. Next up is our Gyarados. It took me a while to decide what type combination I wanted to do with this one. I made a list to keep track of all the types I've used up until this point, so I can try and have an even spread of all the types in my region, and was bouncing around a few different options for this evolution. Once I landed on the idea of giving it clay armor, I knew I had to go grass ground, which is a cool combo. Torterra is one of my favorite Pokemon, and he is the only one with that typing, so I'm glad I came up with something that could fill out the category a little bit. Castle War, the evolved form of Babu. After a long life of being afraid and helpless, once a Babu evolves into a Castle War, its attitude about the world changes. It's extremely proud of what it's grown to be, and because of this, it's taken on a more regal personality. Always standing tall, and rarely lowering its head for any purpose other than to use its massive blade in combat. Immediately after evolving, Castle War actually lack their iconic armor, and the first thing they do after gaining their new form is to craft a set custom to their size, covering themselves in large amounts of clay that they slowly collect, and then finally solidifying it through sunbathing for many hours. Due to all of this extra work and time needed to support a Babu during its transition to a Castle War, and then that Castle War to maturity, they're actually fairly uncommon to see. But after reaching the end result, Castle War is an incredible addition to any trainer's team. I'm super happy with how this one turned out. I think the finalized version of this one hits the mark really well. 
I try pretty hard to make sure that all of my designs look as much like Pokemon as possible. I sample a lot of colors, work on my line weight, try to do my shading and highlighting the same way, but obviously it doesn't always work. There's always a risk of that happening when you're trying to copy someone else's style, so sometimes I just hope that the concept and the art itself is good enough, even though the style might not be exact. Suddy Ruddy, the water rat Pokemon. Suddy Ruddy is known best for the bubbles that cover its body, and the bubble ball that accompanies this Pokemon everywhere it goes. Despite how it may look, these strange orbs are not bubbles, but are made entirely of water, with no negative space on the inside, making them significantly more dense. This can cause some frustration to the Suddy Ruddy, because its favorite thing to do is play catch by bouncing the ball off of its belly, but many trainers have a hard time throwing the ball any significant distance due to its consistency and weight. Suddy Ruddy are also incredibly resistant to poison and venoms, making them a strong candidate to lead a ranger's team when dealing with even the most deadly of poisonous Pokemon in the wild. In fact, some Suddy Ruddy seem to be rejuvenated and invigorated by the process of being poisoned. I had plans for Suddy Ruddy to have some hidden abilities that gave it some pretty powerful buffs when being poisoned. Bonuses to damage, turning the effect into regen, stuff like that. But sadly, that stuff is about to disappear because its evolved form is changing its type, making it completely immune to the poisoned status effect in the process. For those of you with some knowledge of the type combo chart, I'm sure you figured out what it is that's about to happen, and you probably have a few questions as what the hell I'm doing. Welcome to the club. I often wonder what the f I'm doing. It's in my Twitter bio, which reminds me, follow me on Twitter, you dickhead. Traumahera, the evolved form of Suddy Ruddy. The exterior of Traumahera's spiked orbs are surprisingly durable due to the constant pressure of rushing water pushing against the surface from the inside. Traumahera prioritizes using these orbs in combat over anything else, allowing Traumahera to launch them at opponents at high speeds, or to use them as improvised maces when forced into close range. On impact, it's not uncommon for the orbs to bounce off of their target. Traumahera has grown knowledgeable of ways to use this fact to their advantage, becoming quite familiar with the understanding needed to pull off impossibly complex ricochet shots with relative ease. In any circumstances where the orbs pop, Traumahera is capable of rapidly creating more through a gland on the center of either paw. This happens every once in a while, guys, and I'm so sorry, but I've got nothing for you here. I have absolutely nothing to say about the making of this specific Pokemon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the time to tell you if you've made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it. And if you're not already, please think about subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out and makes content creation go a lot faster. I'd love to make more videos than I already do, but there's only so much I can realistically put into this while still needing to work a nine to five. Please help me help you by spreading my stuff to all your friends and family family against their will. But if my content isn't really your thing, a like to appease the YouTube gods would be really cool too. Rock Ryle, the crocodile Pokemon. Rock Ryle are very lazy and tend to spend most of their time sleeping or sunning their back. However, these Pokemon can become quite ornery if disturbed in any way, which happens quite frequently as Rock Ryle love to submerge most of their body in water, hiding themselves in small creeks and streams. What may seem to be a decent sized rock, perfect for hopping across running water, is a slumbering creature ready to turn your foot into its next meal. I asked you guys a while ago if you'd be interested in joining a tank runner discord if I were to make one, and you guys showed a lot of excitement over the idea, so that's a thing that's gonna happen soon, just not very soon. I still have a lot of things going on right now, and I have a lot of videos I wanna pump out before the end of October, so it probably won't exist by the time you're hearing this, but look forward to that in the near future. If you wanna make sure you jump in as soon as possible, keep an eye out for my community posts, and I'll let you guys know as soon as it's up and running. Crocade, the evolved form of Rock Ryle. Crocade is much more active than its younger form, mostly due to acquiring freedom of movement. This Pokemon loves to run around, but lacks any balance or finesse, causing a lot of tumbles and rolling as it acclimates to its new body. It rests less frequently, but still capitalizes on what it's learned, obscuring itself in rapids and at the base of waterfalls to aid in the hunting of unexpected fish. All right, I didn't tell you guys this because I didn't want to get your hopes up, but this Pokemon line is a pseudo-legendary. Well, it's, it's like a pseudo-pseudo-legendary. 
Rock Ryle's final evolution turns Dragon type, which is generally saved for some of the most powerful Pokemon in a region. However, in losing its water typing, it becomes Rock Dragon type, which I thought would be really cool since it's an underused combination, but it gains a few more weaknesses in the process. And on top of that, it's one of the few Dragon type Pokemon that isn't resistant to most elemental damage. Which is why I say it's sort of a pseudo legendary. It's a very powerful dragon type that you can potentially catch early on in the game if you're lucky, but I wouldn't go as far as to say that this will be the only pseudo legendary in our region. I think we can come up with something even more devastating. Kragon, the evolved form of Crocade. Crocade regularly grow too large for their homes upon evolving into Kragon, and unintentionally dam smaller rivers with their bodies. This usually has the benefit of creating small ponds and sometimes even lakes over long periods of time for other groups of smaller Pokemon to live around, but it can also cause a lot of water damage to nearby cities. Some Kragon, feeling cramped, will slowly make their way downstream to find a spot big enough for them. If they fail in finding such a place, Kragon are capable of making their way to open water. It has yet to be understood, but Kragon become much more aggressive once reaching salt water. So it is extremely important that if a Kragon is spotted in a sea or ocean, that any and all trainers flee the location and seek immediate shelter, preferably man-made. 46 Pokemon down, 105 to go. How do you guys think I did? My next upload is going to be my 1000 subscriber Q&A video. I'll try and get that one out quick to make up for the long wait you guys had for this video. I have a few interesting things planned for October. I'll be releasing a ghost type themed Pokemon installment along with something special for Halloween, the one year anniversary for my channel. I might even make it a premiere so we can watch it together. If you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you want to take a crack at drawing any of the prompts I've done, or you want to send me some of your artwork to help flesh out some of my worlds, please send them to me over on my Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys make. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.